Welcome back. It's 120. You are on the money with me, Liam Halligan, here on GB News TV, DAB Plus Digital Radio and online. Today, we're discussing the Chancellor's huge £15 billion spending package to tackle the cost of living crisis, including support for more than 8 million UK households on benefits, plus a grant to lower energy bills for all households. But it's not an emergency budget, the Chancellor insists. But it does, in my view, raise as many questions as it answers. Support for vulnerable households was clearly needed, but how's the Chancellor going to pay for it all? Well, new research from money-saving app Shopmium found disposable incomes have shrunk significantly for two-thirds of UK households now, with a fifth of the population having pretty much no disposable income left at all after they've paid for essentials. And joining the panel now is Stuart Sankey, head of Shopmium, uh, the organisation which conducted this research. Stuart, great to have you in the studio. That's a pretty big number, isn't it? That amount of people with... What does no disposable income mean? Well, money after rent, mortgage, mandatory payments. I think the, the research that we did showed that more than ever, the impact of the cost of living crisis is, is really covering more households than we've ever seen before. So a real shrink in money that you've got to spend um, either to do your supermarket shopping, which is the space that we understand and know yeah. very, very well, but obviously across the board in terms of clothing, fashion, lifestyle, etc. And, of course, the reality is we're already seeing this in the sort of fine print of the Bank of England numbers, which I monitor every month. You're already seeing a lot more money being taken out on credit cards. You're already seeing a lot more personal debt. You're seeing, we're hearing reports of more, if you like, twilight lending industry, shop, you know, um, uh, doorstep loans going on, lo use of loan sharks, pawnbrokers and, and so on. You know, most of what I just mentioned are completely legitimate activities, yep. of course, but not necessarily the best thing for low-income vulnerable households. No, but, um, but ultimately, um, I mean, the, the data that I've got access to and the... And the uh, the space that I understand very well is is grocery shopping and, and yeah. things that we do in the supermarket, which is something that every single household, rich or poor, does. And um, in the same way that we need to buy energy to heat our homes. And so the reality of this situation is that, yes, people are trying to find ways of, um, of boosting income or finding ways to uh, spend more in store. But the reality is that we're all going to have to do grocery shopping. And so one of the things that we need to start to do yeah. is to come a little bit, to be a little bit smarter yeah. about the way that we do that. So, to, you know, we, we all need essentials to feed ourselves, to feed our families, children, if you've got them at home. Um, but we could all be a little bit smarter to do that. And we are seeing, aren't we? I mean, this is just a fact. I don't want to denigrate any businesses when they're not here to defend themselves. But we are seeing in those supermarket figures a shift away from, if you like, the mid-ranking and more upmarket supermarkets. The discounters, they're actually increasing their revenues, aren't they? The Aldi's and the Lidl's. Yes. They, I mean, we are seeing a lot of people changing their spending habits, but also changing where they spend. Totally. And, um, and so uh, when we asked uh, households back in the beginning of this month what habits had they started to, uh, uh, to change, one of the key things that came up was looking for lower-cost retailers mm. um, to save money. And that was about 40% of mm. households doing that. But there are many other changes, so more scratch cooking, um, meal planning more, yeah. um, uh, purchasing. I think you're, uh, you talked previously, just before the ad break, about purchasing and consuming less. That's a key trend, and we've seen it in the news about skipping meals, etc. But again, just to reiterate, this is not a niche problem. This is a real challenge right across households. And so the people that we talk to are pretty much the average household mm. in the UK. So all incomes and, um, and it's a, a, some habit changes that are really coming into effect now. Some real insights there, Greg, from, from Stuart. In your, on your...